Hey, what's going on guys? Girls Hard Drive here, Fine Tune CB. <clears throat> I've been vaping too much today, so I'm kind of losing my voice. <clears throat> Hopefully you can hear me. The air conditioner has to stay on. It's still pretty hot down here by the Rio Grande. I'll try to move closer. This isn't going to be a bash fest. It's going to be more like a reality fest. So go grab a cigarette, if you smoke, or whatever you do, whatever. Let's see how this video turns out. Alright, this, that's my 955. It's probably the cleanest radio you've ever seen. And for future people coming into this video, it'll probably, probably be the cleanest radio you've ever seen. Of 10 and 11 meter radios. So uh, I'm going to show you what it does. It's not balls to the walls or nothing like that. But I want you to see everything. I want you to take all this in. All of it. If you've been watching my videos long enough, you have an idea what you're looking at. It's the real deal. Every solder joint. Okay? So take that into consideration. I don't think there's anything anywhere in North America on this continent that is this accurate at 11 meters. I'm not blowing no uh, horns or nothing, it's just the facts are the facts. It is what it is. This started out like, okay, we got issues, and then I was like, wait a minute, it warms up, it'll be okay, and I, I pulled a the General HP out, brand new. The customer and I discussed it, see how things would go. And the HP 40s are awesome to run by themselves. They're not always the cleanest radios for an amp. So I thought it may have been the radio. Well, it's not. Even though the HP 40s are still not as clean as this. The Any Tones, the 955s, they're clean. Out of the box, they're pretty good, but after they're properly tuned and aligned, you know, everything balanced, clean radio. Clean is what you're always looking for. So, uh, let me show you what this radio does. And try to remember the numbers, or you can always come back and look again. Oh, I'm not going to show you the face. The face and the name is irrelevant. It's just how shit's been in the last decade. And it's gotten a lot worse in the, like the last, especially three years. It's gotten bad. Real bad. Some are trying. By the way, the guy that built this, you have a clean iron. I like that. Good job. Looks beautiful inside. It does. No flux everywhere. Good solder joints. The soldering all the assembling, nice. Fans are quiet too, but we'll get to that. Okay, there's a 10 watt key. Turn it down to like a five. Some of you guys will notice the linearity change also slightly. All right, five. I want you to remember 10. Take a good close look. Zoom in, do whatever you want to do, yes. Awesome. Now, I don't run my stuff wide open. That's wide open and it has headroom. You can see it's a, a 15 watt carrier. Alright. 30 kilohertz. Alright. Nice. Alright, so now I'm going to turn it back down to a, exactly at a 10. And uh, in a video not long ago, I mentioned that I forgot to put some shrink tube 
on the, uh, the cable, the repeater. Well, because considering that these are always going to be, oh, I don't, there's no junk here, okay? That this is going to stay here now, only for one purpose, all right? One purpose only. It was retuned. So now it has shrink tube on both ends. So we're going to take this and then go straight to the amp. And this straight to the radio. You can see it. Right? Kind of hard to get everything in here and not scratch nothing. It's a big bench. And we're also going to use this one. It's really no length. It's actually 32 inches, but if you do the math on 500 foot spools or 200 foot lengths and know how to tune the wire, the leftover piece is cut in half. How will I use them? The whole bench is getting rewired with 240. Certain times length matters, other times it does not. The key is understanding when it does matter, or always use the right stuff, and you'll never have a problem. So anyways, it's going to get a little bit noisy in here. The power supply that's running this is like at 14.3, and it's back over there. You're going to hear it. Hold on. Cosell PBA 1500s are probably the best that there are but the fans make a little bit of noise. All right. Okay. Well, let's go to here first. Let's wind that up to 200. I've turned the radio up a little bit. Now let's take a look at it. Hold on. Get that out of the way. That's a 1K right there. Oh yeah, you'll notice they're all like in perfect shape. There's no weird things happen to them. So 10 watts would have gave us right at the 200 watt period. And you can see it's on now. Okay. That's, well, you can see it. All right. It's doing all it can. Every ounce that it possibly can. Now, if you watch the meter and the scope and the spectrum analyzer all at the same time, Jack, I think you'll like this part. As we start to push it, you'll see intermodulation distortion. Okay? Now, naturally, if I talk into the mic, you're going to see it go woo woo woo. Audio, okay. That's not real. This is real. Alright. Real as it gets. Now I'm going to turn the power down. Let's say to 100 watt here. As it warms up, it cleans up a little. You can see the intermodulation distortion. I'm assuming combiner wire lengths, pills aren't beta matched. I'm not exactly sure. But I was going to let this go. I called the customer and uh, said, well, yeah, it's going to be in a mobile. This is acceptable because you're only going to be at 100% modulation part of the time. 
now as we drop the power lower, I'm going to drop it way down. You can see it in the spectrum analyzer. You can see it in the scope too. I don't know if you can see that very well. That power reading isn't actually what it is because it's taking all the harmonics and adding it up. And that's what you're visualizing. I'll turn the 20 megahertz bandwidth on and you'll see that it knocks a lot of it out. Now let's go to I'll shut the back off. Now that we're at a 20 5 watt carrier, which that would be great, okay? That'd be awesome. For a mobile radio to be able to talk. That's a lot of power, really. It's clean power. 25 watts carrier is decent. Okay, we have quite a bit of intermodulation distortion. Let's see if I can't zoom you in. See it? I'll turn the 25 the 20 megahertz bandwidth limiter on. That knocks out pretty much everything over 20 megahertz. And you can still see it. Let's back on out. You can definitely see it in the spectrum analyzer. It's going to be set nice there. Now let's go to a 50 watt key. This would have been perfect. 50 watt carrier. But as we can see, we still have some issues. And I will put it on at the time. You could hear it now coming through something in here because of the harmonics. Let's uh, take it off of that and be doing that. Let's go to point three, which is 30 kilohertz. As you can see, I've done my job. There's no adjacent channel splatter going on. 30 megahertz. Well, as we go to 300, and this is on a resistive load, by the way. You see a whole bunch of splatter happening. Now let's take this out of here. And just for instance, some length, okay? Well, let me put this back on. We'll, go, we'll get back to that. Let's turn it back up to 100. And uh, let's see how much it can actually do at this voltage. Okay? So let's turn it down to where it's a decent wave with the least amount of splatter. IMD. Which is right about there. And then take another look at it. It's set. Okay, now, plus, say, a 20, 25 watt key headroom, because you can't run them wide open like that. You would never be able to carry the human voice, especially low frequencies and the highs all at the same time, and not splatter and be crystal clear and, like, chop through the rest of that garbage that's out there, watt for watt. 
and there we go. Everything's warming up. There we go. Now, let's get it right at 100. Get everything set right on the money. Take a good mental picture. That's not necessarily good. More power, what you think is more power, isn't more power. Now let's look at that a different style of load. That's reality. That's called real. That's what you'd be getting. So if you think that you can start messing around with coax lengths, it's not how it works. There is a standard on 50 ohms. When you start dealing with a Class C and the Q factor of a Class C, it's a whole different world. Now let's take a look at it and turn the power down. I don't even want to keep it key. It's already been in the self oscillation a couple of times. I was able to bump the on and off switch to get it out of that stage. You start going into that stage, if you're a driver, or you have things on your mind, you're a busy person, say you're in your four-wheeler or your big truck, and you're talking on low power, because you don't need high power up close, you want to be able to use your radio, you don't want to be flipping switches and doing all kinds of stupid shit, you should be able to talk it, say, 25 watts, and the amp remains stable. So now you're talking on you're talking to another driver, the scale house, whoever, whatever. And you you know you gotta go do something or help somebody. It's an emergency. You jump out of your truck real quick, you unkey the mic, and now all of a sudden it starts to go into turmoil. You know, I'll, I'll finish, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Use your imagination. Like when you're walking back to your truck or running back to your truck because it's on fire, or at least you get in the truck and you wonder what that smell was. There was something, it ain't smelling now, but there was a lingering odor in your truck. Something smelled hot. You reach over and you touch it and it's warm. But you're thinking to yourself, but I haven't been on the radio in an hour or whatever. And that's the kind of shit that happens. Matter of fact, no, it's just warm. Just the heat sink. I, it, it was doing it earlier. Actually, the heat sink's pretty damn hot. Also, I did notice the input tune on it's not real bad. It's like a 1.1 with uh, the amp off and like about a 1.4, 1.5. But it's about a 3 now. Yeah, that's a 3. That's bad, okay? Real bad. I'm gonna turn the power up. It cleans it up somewhat, but still, that's a nightmare. As you notice with the repeater, it's much more stable. But you just may as well just start putting jumpers on there and trying to figure things out. That's not how things work. If the amp was stable, you might be able to. 
but still with the tune half is that's the route. Something else I want to cover. This amp has a delay on it, a switch in the front. Why bother with a Class C? I'll tell you what would be more important, and your customers might like it, would be deduct $100 from your labor for the sale of the amp and don't install the switch and the capacitor and the wiring that the book says or the kit says. Take a hundred bucks off and don't install it. It's useless. Or, even better yet, take that and install this and the ground wire. Okay? I had to put this on here to be able to test it. It should have this already connected and soldered. The assembler's time is much cheaper than the technician's time. Don't you want your customer to already have it to where he plugs it in, where you supply both ends? Just think. You could either deduct a hundred bucks off of the sale of every amplifier, because you're not putting that switch in no more. Or you could do them right. Give them the other side of this. Install a positive and a negative. We all know they're polarized. And then you wouldn't have to worry about them hooking it up backwards, blowing up the amplifier in a number of other scenarios. You could even supply them with the wire that they're going to hook it up to their battery with. It's a good idea, isn't it? Let's see, what else was there? You know, I don't see anyone else doing videos on this. Or maybe it's the lack of the videos. If you can't see the amplifier working like on a tuned bench guys and girls and the radio the radio is always number one the bench the radio is tuned on and the technician nothing ever will be more important to your radio system than that it's not the amplifier it's not the antenna system it's the radio then you buy an amp you don't buy an amp and then the guy says well you're gonna turn it to this turn it to that no it's bass backwards. You guys have been bamboozled and bullshitted too long. A linear amp's the way to go. Okay? Class C's, people like myself, we know what to do and how to tune it. Here, I got something for you guys. You amp builders, assemblers, whatever you want to call yourselves. <clears throat> Build me a straight six. Don't put stickers on it. AB biased thermal tracking. Send it to me. Put the label, return label back on it. I'll test it. And I'll tell you what. If you can do it, there's one person in this continent that would probably go through a whole bunch of them. And the six pill would be the right amplifier. Build me a linear amplifier. Show me you can do it. Prove it. Send it to me. You can get my address. And I want it to drop down to 10 watts. I can do all the rest. I can do all of it. But that's not what I do. After this video, I got a bunch of radios to get ready to, to tune, to ship. That's what I do. And I do this. But I'm not here to rebuild amplifiers, especially re-engineer them. When they're already built, it's a real pain in the ass. So there it stands. You know who can do it. I'm giving you a clue what to do. What's really needed. You know, for just about every customer out there. What could be utilized in a vehicle or as a base at home as a driver. Six pill, linear tracking, biased return label. I'm not buying them. I'll send them back. Maybe if I find something or you show me what you can do consistently maybe I would buy one. And maybe be able to sell a lot of them too. I think I pretty much covered what I wanted to cover tonight. 
there's no hocus pocus here. You're seeing nothing but reality. And I'm trying to convey myself to the, the my by the way, my analytics on YouTube are 99 like 99 percent male to uh, well from 48 to 64 years old. There's a couple younger, a couple older. But pay attention to what I'm saying. I hope everybody has a great week. I got a bunch of work to get done. This has sucked up my day from when I woke up. Builder, it's not a bash session. I ain't gonna say no more. I know a lot more what's been said. With you know, I know a lot more. So uh, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Check all this stuff out. There's no games here. I have a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of knowledge invested in this. And the other guys say, oh, the coax length, well, the, the load and the resistive. I know all that. It's what you don't know is the key. So build a biased amplifier, runs at 14.2, 14.4, 6 pill, send it. Thermal tracking. Stay tuned in. You know who it is. Click, click. Where's that damn switch?